Excuse me, sir. You look puzzled. Perhaps I can help you. I see. You want to know the thermal conductivity of that bar of tungsten. And you can't seem to find a simple answer, right? Did you know that that question has been studied by more than 100 researchers since 1914? Would you like to see their results all in one chart? Okay, watch this. Now do you see why you can't find a simple answer? All that research probably cost at least three million dollars over the years, yet it makes no sense at all, does it? But don't worry, there is someone who can make sense out of it for you. Watch. This line is a recommended curve, the creation of which required correlations with material properties and theoretical considerations. It is not an eyeball curve, or at least squares fit. It is the work of Sindus. Sindus is the Center for Information and Numerical Data Analysis and Synthesis. Sindus is a national information analysis center that collects and evaluates the available worldwide data on the thermophysical, electronic, and optical properties of virtually all materials of scientific and technological interest. In other words, its job is to reconcile widely divergent data, such as those on the chart you just saw. This saves you time, money, and mistakes, not to mention frustration. Sindus is part of the schools of engineering at Purdue University. It was established as the Thermophysical Properties Research Center in 1957 and soon grew to include three separate but closely integrated operating centers, one dealing with thermophysical properties, another covering electronic, magnetic, and optical properties, and the third center responsible for underground excavation and rock properties. Sindus also operates a combined thermophysical and electronic properties information analysis center for the Department of Defense, and since 1963, an overseas affiliate at Kobe University, Kobe, Japan. Within its own building at the Purdue Industrial Research Park are all the elements of a national information analysis center, data collection and codification, data reduction and storage, access to sophisticated computers. But the heart of Sindus is its 40 professional specialists and supporting staff and their expertise in the science and art of data analysis and synthesis. One of those people, the center's founder and director, Professor Y.S. Tolukian, describes the mission of Sindus. Our nation's economic strength is intimately related to its ability to translate scientific advances into technological innovations. Our achievements in generation of energy, high technology construction, aeronautics and space exploration, transportation, and all the fields of engineering are the result of scientific breakthroughs which we often call progress. The science of materials development plays a key role in that progress. The knowledge of material behavior under all forms of environments is essential to all of us in the development of new or improved engineering systems. To meet our needs for such knowledge, we spend millions of dollars on research. Much of that research results in data, which are usually published in reports, journals, or books, and disseminated to libraries, documentation centers, and so on. But the volume of published data has multiplied so rapidly that we have had to develop sophisticated computer programs to index and facilitate access to the documents. We have also been forced to physically miniaturize documents for easier storage. These microforms have played a key role in helping us gather and disseminate the world's literature. 
Although we have achieved a certain manageability over this mountain of documents, only a few organizations such as Sindus have actually penetrated inside the mountain in an attempt to locate and mine its precious contents. Why so few? Simply because documents are easy to manipulate. They have convenient handles such as author's names, titles, volume numbers, and so forth. They do not give rise to arguments or create confusion and little intellectual decision-making is involved in their manipulation. On the other hand, when one attempts to process the data contents of those documents, one is often faced with great discord. This can be resolved only with sophisticated intellectual effort and at considerable cost. Here are some data on the thermal conductivity of titanium carbide published by a well-known and respected scientist in 1954. He obtained his results by two completely different experimental methods which confirmed each other. These were the only data available until 1961. Since titanium carbide is an important machining metal, many tool designers and engineers must have used these data faithfully for years. Based on the data, some probably rejected the material as being inadequate for certain applications. However, in 1961, new measurements showed that the thermal conductivity of titanium carbide actually increases with temperature, like this. The correct data are five times higher at 800 degrees Kelvin, 10 times higher at 1360 degrees Kelvin. Another example of disagreement among data concerns the thermal diffusivity of tungsten. The only data that existed before 1963 are those shown here. But new and more accurate measurements prove the true values to be thus five times higher than the old values. These are just a few examples that illustrate the need for data analysis, a difficult but important step beyond simple document control. Here at Gaithersburg, Maryland, just north of our nation's capital, is the United States Bureau of Standards. An associate director of the Bureau is Dr. Edward L. Brady. One of his jobs is to oversee the Office of Standard Reference Data which is vitally concerned with the use of reliable data. What we're doing now is running the National Standard Reference Data System. And let me describe that very briefly. This is a coordinated program, government-wide, to provide compilations of critically evaluated data for scientists and engineers to use. As I see it, there are three ways in which the availability of critical data help technology. One way is in saving the time of the engineer who has a job to do. If he needs data of a particular type, he can look it up in a handbook, but usually he finds that the data he's looking for aren't there. 